Hi, my name is Angela and I was one of the Credential Committee members appointed by Bernie's campaign to represent Oregon. I was one of the people that went to Philadelphia and participated in the, Philadelphia, the Democratic National Convention in Philly. I also participated in a few other things happening during the week, such as the caucuses that happened at the Philadelphia Convention Center. When I first arrived, I was invited to attend the tour of the Wells Fargo Center, but I was also instructed that I needed to keep, uh, make sure I didn't have any Bernie gear on me or mention that I was a Bernie supporter. While I was there, I witnessed some of the first-hand um, experiences I would have of being targeted or bullied for being a Bernie supporter. Many people were saying really awful things about Bernie. They were talking really badly about us supporters. And in a group at one point, they, a couple of people looked at me and noticed I hadn't said anything bashing with them. And they said, are you here for Bernie or Hillary? And I said, I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. And they said, how did you get in? I walked away from the line and went over back to my group and didn't say anything. On Monday night, I was approached when I was in the upper levels of the arena by a few super volunteers who had finally found somebody that might be able to help them. They had been trying to get access to the floor to help our delegates as they had been instructed by our campaign and by the DNC that they were going to be allowed to come into the arena as runners for our delegates. They were going to be on the floor of the arena the whole week, 800 of them, helping our delegations with things like getting access to water and food, helping our 88 delegates find seating that's adequate and that gave them space with their wheelchairs, helping them get to the bathroom when needed, many other things that they were supposed to be helping with. However, the DNC blocked every one of them from actually doing their jobs. They all paid their own way to fly there and to help and were sadly turned away after being treated badly by the DNC. I fought really hard to get a couple of them onto an interview with Jordan Sheraton from the, the Young Turks, and thankfully he was able to get the story to go live with these women's stories and, and witness accounts of how the DNC had censored them from being able to help our delegates. I had been hearing stories and getting text messages of how hard it was for our delegates on the floor, not being able to get water, waiting in line for an hour at the concession stands, the few that they had opened, just to buy a $4.75 bottle of water or a $6 pretzel. It was very disheartening to see the treatment of our delegates, and I had hoped that by us airing Jordan's story on the Young Turks that the DNC would budge and would give them their credentials. They were given 200 credentials that night, and that's how those delegate, those super volunteers found me. 200 of them were allowed to come in and to be on the upper levels of the arena, but still restricted from doing the jobs they were sent to do. By Tuesday, all of them were told they would not get any credentials for the week. The DNC told the Bernie campaign this. I was then contacted again by a couple of them, very upset that they still couldn't help. And I realized that it was going to be a much harder battle than we had thought. By Wednesday, the DNC finally broke a little and offered those three women only to get their delegation cred or to get their credentials, but it would still be restricted to the top floors again. By this time, many of them had been very frustrated with being left outside of the arena, forced to not do the jobs they came here to do, that they raised money to come here to do and they went home frustrated. On Wednesday, I myself stayed home. I stayed at the hotel and didn't come to the convention due to being targeted Tuesday night by Hillary supporters. One man calling me an ignorant bitch as I walked into the bathroom and stood there staring at me like he was trying to intimidate me. And the other two women I happened to unfortunately walk up right behind and stand in line choosing to tell me things like, what are you even doing here? We don't need you. You don't belong here. Why are you still here? I took my pins off and hid them and noticed the rest of Tuesday evening I wasn't targeted once. Not one person gave me a glare or said any horrible things under their breath as they walked by. So Wednesday I stayed in and I, I tried to rest and I tried to regroup because I didn't know what else I could do to help. I still heard about Wednesday and Tuesday night of all the struggles our delegates were having. 
But the most frustrating was not just being denied the help of their runners, but being harassed and abused by people who were given the floor credentials of our super volunteers. On Tuesday night after the roll call was finished, our Bernie supporters, our Bernie delegates, bravely went to the media tent to quietly protest the roll call. While I saw them going out into the media tent, they were texting me that the police had surrounded the tent in riot gear and there were snipers on the roof pointing guns at them and that they were scared. I was very afraid for them as well and I took pictures of their empty seats in the arena because it was a large section of people missing. Within a few minutes of me taking those pictures, the stands suddenly started filling on the floor of the convention. People we had never seen before, people you did not elect to be your delegates, walking in and sitting down in our delegation seats. I watched Oregon and Washington fill up and I knew something wasn't right. So I walked out into the hall area and a friend of mine, another one from the credentials committee, also a Bernie supporter, noticed people walking by looking very dressed up, very young, and most of them holding floor credentials in their hands, not placed on official DNC lanyards. One of them said, I can't believe we got these floor credentials. And my friend immediately said to me, oh my gosh, in the meeting this morning, we were warned if any of our delegates protested or left the arena that they had 800 seat fillers that the DNC was going to put in their place and we watched it happen. So Wednesday night I heard a lot of stories from our delegates about the, the fighting they had to do, the bravery they had to put up with just to keep their seats, but they were constantly being hid by huge Hillary banners that were brought in and they were bullied around by people around them trying to take their seats. Thursday I thought I'd have a little bit more courage and try to go for one last time to show solidarity and uh, unfortunately, I emotionally wasn't able to handle that. I was very scared, and I was tired of being targeted because I had chosen the high road in every instance not to retaliate against anyone, not to call them names, not to say hurtful things, not to target their candidate, but to keep my mouth shut. Because I knew I was representing Bernie and everything we stood for. Unfortunately, because I couldn't stop crying and be calm, I needed some help. And our Oregon delegation and Washington, de Washington delegation was very kind to me and came and helped me sit down there with them so that I wasn't alone. It was a really hard time because I thought for sure that we were all on the same page. I thought all of us in the arena had patriotism on our minds and we all valued life. But the things I saw from Hillary supporters were screaming far worse things than any Trump support rally I've ever heard of or read about. These people had no problem treating you like garbage just for sharing a different view. I haven't been able to really sleep very well. I've thought a lot about every one of the delegates and everything they've been through in how they were treated. Many of our delegates coming home with bruises, with some had <laughs> twisted ankles and been pushed down the stairs on the arena. Other people in wheelchairs and ADA delegates were hit in the head repeatedly with cameras and put in aisles that were not ADA accessible. The ADA needs were huge and the DNC refused to meet them. They could call it being um, unprepared, but I say they lacked empathy, and so the unprepared is not going to cut it in my view. We were calling out for their help. We were asking them to help, and they ignored us. The final day, the way that I could tell that the DNC knew exactly what they were doing was when I was sitting in the delegation seating. Someone had swapped credentials for me to be there, and my delegates were hugging me to help me feel calm and safe knowing that I wouldn't be targeted again. We had a woman in a yellow vest walk up to the group and say, I'm your runner, everybody. 
and we said, how many delegations are you a runner for? And she said, oh, I'm a, a whole bunch. And she said, I was on the other side of the arena yesterday. And we said, what about our runners? And she said, no, it's just me. She said, when, an, when this closet back here empties, I'll put some water in it for you. And we said, we're going to get water. That's amazing. She never came back to our section. She never helped anybody. And she never filled that closet with water. We were on our own from the start. The DNC tried to put on a show. And they failed miserably. I'm not keeping my mouth shut about it. And I'm going to make sure that every delegate understands that I saw what happened to them. And I will not be a part of a party that would treat them that way. Because if they treat their delegates this way, what makes you think when she gets into power that she wouldn't treat every citizen this way? It's time to go with your heart and your gut. Many people feel that following Bernie's lead is the important thing to do right now and supporting her. But after what I've seen, I will never support a dictator like her. I will never support a group of people who would blatantly choose to hurt their own, de their own delegation their own party members. They had no problem with treating us this way. They endorsed it. They sent text messages to their seat fillers telling them how to treat us, to hurt us. And if you want to stay a part of that party, that's your choice. I hope if you can change it from within that you hold them accountable. But I'm not holding my breath that that will happen. So I'm throwing my support behind Jill Stein because I know that she still represents the ideals that Bernie was talking about. And with her, I know that people will not be abused and mistreated.